We're back uh, with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And of course, uh, we're set for our first major uh, conversation right here. Uh, looking at the situation as far as um, the Inamdi Kanu case is concerned. And our guest is already standing by uh, to do justice to that topic. Well, uh, the federal government is saying it will, of Nigeria, that is, is saying it will consider uh, appropriate legal options concerning the judgment of the Court of Appeal. Uh, on the trial of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOB, uh, Namdi Kanu, the Attorney General of the Federation, Nabuka Malami, he made this known in a statement issued by Dr. Umar Gwando, who is his special assistant on media and public relations uh, at the Ministry of Justice. Malami said, quote, for the avoidance of doubt and by the verdict of the court, Kanu was only discharged and not acquitted. End of quote. Now, consequently, the appropriate legal op options uh, before the authorities, uh, the federal government is saying, will be exploited and uh, communicated accordingly. Uh, if you remember, the court on Thursday in Abuja uh, quashed the terrorism charges brought against uh, Namdi Kanu, the leader of the indigenous, the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra group, uh, delivering judgment in an appeal filed by Kanu, a three member panel led by Justice Hana to Sanke in a unanimous judgment held that the respondent by not responding to the appellant's submissions conceded uh, to the allegation that Kano was forcefully renditioned to from Nigeria to Kenya uh, to Nigeria rather from Kenya now joining us to discuss this involvement with analysis is um I guess he's a legal professional legal practitioner he joins us live from uh, Port Hacker via video link uh, Chief Fessus Aguche good morning to you and thank you very much for your time Yes, good morning, Kofi, and good morning to Nigerians. All right. uh, for, the, for those who uh, would like to understand uh, what that, what's exactly the Court of Appeal said, can you please break it down to us? Because from what we, 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 we read, it seems like um, the non-participation uh, or uh, uh, the non-submission you know, you know, of the, the federal government legal team uh, was taken as a concession by the federal government's team. Is that what happened? And what did the judges say? No, it's, not of, it's not a matter of concession. The judgment is very clear and unambiguous to the effect that the, the Nnamdi Kano cannot be tried in Nigeria when the issue of his rendition or his forceful, extraordinary rendition um, or abduction, if you permit me, and those, that's exactly the word used by the Court of Appeal, has not been resolved or settled by the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The issue is hanging on the neck of the, of the federal government like a sort of damocles. Uh, the, the main crux of uh, the, the judgment of the Court of Appeal, which I commend very, very well, is that Nambi Kano shouldn't have been arranged or brought before any court of law for any charge when the manner in which is brought into the country is unlawful, it breaches the international obligations, international law, it even breaches domestic law, and it's even criminal in all its essence. So that you cannot, um, in... in committing an unlawful purpose seek to seek a benefit. So the federal government does not have the powers. They do not, they lack the, the, the mandate whatsoever, that, both under the constitution and under international law, to arraign him in court, to charge him for anything, when the manner in which is brought violates fundamental rights, violates international law, violates domestic law, violates the decency with the, between the Committee of Nations. That's exactly what the Court of Appeal is saying. And they went for that to say that, well, what the federal government has done amounts to executive recklessness. When a judicial body uses that phrase, then it tells you something that much more profound than that you have the might of the federal government to do what you like. The first time they used that was when the, the Lagos State government went into a, a, a frolic of its own in the Ujuku property in Lagos. The Supreme Court, I think it was of Puta, JSC, um, 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 may he rest in peace, that clearly stated that it's executive recklessness. And there's no better way of putting it, and it clearly tells you that it's an act of irresponsibility, it's an act that is unpermittable, and it's, a, it's an act that's unpalatable, and it's a lack, a, a, an act that lacks any, 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 any legal uh, uh, support. Okay, but, but, uh, but Barrister, I was referring to uh, the portion uh, in which the panel of judges said that um, uh, the, the, the respondent, in not uh, responding to the applicant's uh, submission, uh, uh, conceded. Uh, um, what do they mean by that? 
Well, in fact, there are submissions made by a party and the other party does not respond. It shows that he has conceded. But that concession is not the point. It's not that the, federal, the courts give that judgment on the basis of admission by the uh, uh, federal government lawyers. No. Apparently, it is very clear that on such very weighty uh, appeal, appeal that has so much weight, it's, I'm surprised that counsel or lawyers will not uh, try to respond to issues of importance that are raised by the, 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 the appellant. And if they do not raise it, or if if they fail to respond to it, respond to it, it's either that they do not have anything to respond to, or the the, the law is just against them, and that's what what happens. So it's not that the, the judgment is on the basis of that um, lack of response on the part of the the federal government lawyers, but it's simply on the merits of. Uh, the fact of the violation of fundamental rights, the violation of international law, the violation of the rules of due process, due process of the law, the 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 the, 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 the fact of, of the violation of constitutional provisions relating to the fundamental rights of Namdikano. So, so if, if that's the case, I mean, uh, as it is, like you've rightly stated, will that be uh, the reason why the federal government is not honouring uh, the? Uh, you know, court ruling, I mean, the court of appeal to release. And also there's been this argument about uh, Namdi Kanu being discharged and not acquitted. I'd like you to throw more light on that. Uh, being discharged and not acquitted, does it mean that he shouldn't be released or, you know, he can go about? There, there, there's no reason under the law and we have to find any justification for the continued detention of Namdi Kanu except for the fact that his right is being continuously violated by the federal government. Um, the, the judgment of the Court of Appeal is very, very clear that you cannot charge him if any allegation they have against him relates with or pertains to the fact of the rendition or the reason why he was brought into, into Nigeria. You cannot charge him. The only option available to the federal government is to appeal. And, it, and probably the appeal may not even be a non-justification. It is not, as a matter of fact, a non-justification to keep him in incarceration because the judgment is very, very clear. And remember, it is not just the judgment of the Court of Appeal. The United Nations Human Rights Commission, which is also the Human Rights Court of the world, has said that there was Nabi Kano has not committed any offense known to law. And his continued detention and trial and everything amounts to, amounts to a violation of his fundamental rights. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the option being sought, sought by the Attorney General Malami, uh, he said there are options. I don't see any option available because I don't see them having any I mean, any day in the Supreme Court in this matter, as far as I'm concerned, it, it has become quite uh, very, very, very notorious that we are dealing with uh, uh, persons who do not understand the entails of the rule of law, the due process of the law, constitutional supremacy, respect for international obligations, and all that. So it, it, it's not a matter of discharged and acquitted. Whether he's acquitted or not, it's immaterial. If you look at the text of that judgment, which clearly says that you cannot charge him to court by implication, you don't charge him to court for any reason whatsoever. And even those charges that are still there, we are quashing all of them for all the right. reason that the manner in which you brought him to court is unlawful so, under international law, under domestic law, under the constitution, under civility, under decency. That's the crux of that judgment. Okay, uh, uh, Chief Oguche, whilst we, we, we try to get to the next question, please, uh, uh, you can kindly just slide your chair a bit backward so that we can have the full compliment of seeing you. Yes, better. That's fine. That's okay. So, uh, 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 Messi, right. Messi was about to ask you a follow-up question, I believe, yeah? yeah? Yes, quickly. So, I'd like to ask you, what is the reason behind, uh, as some persons have described, the rascality of the executive arm of government, that's the federal government, in constantly especially in this case we know there are several cases where the government has not respected you know the the rule of law or has not respected you know court ruling and injunction so what, what exactly is responsible for uh, the executive rascality if you like to say how why why have the federal government over time constantly constantly and it seems like you know the federal government is so powerful that you know no arm of government can check the excesses of the federal government the court of appeal used the word recklessness executive recklessness the first time the courts used it in nigeria was under the military 
Unfortunately, right, I think we have been disconnected. He's a legal practitioner, and we hope that we have him back so we can have further discussion as regards all of this. You know, so there's been a lot of talk about uh, whether or not, you know, uh, the, there's an issue with being charged and acquitted, and that's the case. And so the government is also looking for all the legal option. Uh, do we have Festus back? Festus, can you hear us? Yes, yes I'm here. What, what I was saying, what I was saying, and uh, it's very, very clear, is that uh, we, are, we are looking at the, 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 the antecedents of some persons in this government. It was within the Buhari era that Omar uh, Dico was abducted on North you know, attempted to be adopted from Heathrow Airport in London. Within this era, we had the judgment of the United Nations Human Rights Commission. First time we're having that kind of judgment in Nigeria. They failed to, 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 to abide the or to implement that judgment. Within this period, since 2015, no single judgment of the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice has been obeyed and implemented. No single one of them. All the judgments in the federal government prefers to ignore all of them. And I think it begins to see that though the international law is not binding on Nigeria, or Nigeria is not a member of the United Nations, or a member of the Equals Commission or the African Commission, and does not belong to the Committee of Nations. You see this type of thing in totalitarian regimes. But then we are in a democracy, and these things are being done, and people are getting away with it. I think if this government has had the privilege of, of uh, the, the indulgence of the courts much more bigger than any other one. And you'd be surprised that it's the same administration that hounded the judges and justices and sent them to prison, treated them like criminals. Within the same government, the CJN, Chief Justice of Nigeria, you know, Walter Onogin, was removed unconstitutionally, a manner that smacks of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, indiscretion, total complete indecency. All right. And we are still uh, yeah. Chief, Chief, Chief Oguche, just, just before we go. Yes, yes. yes. Chief Oguche, just before we go, uh, just a last, yeah, a final question for uh, to you before we go. Um, uh, Malami has talked about uh, pre-rendition pre matters uh, with, the, with the appeal court, uh, you know, giving its ruling on, on the rendition of Kano. They've said there are some matters that were in existence before he was rendered that are up for judicial determination. Um, in you, if you recall clearly, he was under trial and was released on bail before jumping bail and leaving the country now. Uh, would you expect that um, Kano will be let go, um, you know, despite the presence of these pre-rendition or pre-abduction, whichever the case may be, uh, uh, issues and cases and matters that are still up for judicial determination? Because it's proven to be still uh, a flight risk. Um, it's proven, he's done it, so he is a flight risk. I don't know what it means by pre initial matters. Remember, there's the judgment of the High Court of Justice in Hawaii. Which judgment is very, very direct and straightforward to the fact that Namdekan should be free. Yeah, but but but, but, but Barrister, that, that that is a fundamental yeah. that is a fundamental rights enforcement case. But before Kano uh, was I, yes, I, I, yeah. But on I, on, on I, the I on the charges know. of treason, before he was um he was he was taken out of the country, he is facing trial uh, for treason. Now, the, 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 the appeal court, like you rightly said, has ruled on how he was brought into the country and they say it was unconstitutional. Having said that, he is already in Nigeria and he has a case to answer and he was released on bail and jumped bail. So should the government, you know, um, should, they, should they throw away the former case? Is that case still not on? Can they still not take him to court? You and I cannot sit here and circumvent the judgment of the Court of Appeals. The judgment is very straightforward. And so also is man and me. He cannot circumvent the judgment of... What does he mean by pre-election, pre-rendition matters? The Court of Appeals is saying that anything concerning him relating to the issue or issue of which he was abducted cannot be tried in any court. Very straightforward. I took a careful look, a very circumspective look of that judgment, and that's what it's saying. The judgment of the High Court of Umaya is very, very relevant here because he granted him, the, the, the judge granted bail to Namdekano from that court, and that, that uh, judgment was not respected. So what pre-election matter will stop you from releasing somebody on bail, somebody who has been discharged by the Court of Appeal? And remember that the issue concerning Namdekano is one that involves a whole lot of things. International criminal responsibility is there. 
And if I'm in one of issues, I'll be trying to be a little bit careful to know the extent of my involvement because these things have a way of boomeranging on those in authority, particularly state actors. If at the end of the day it is discovered they were part and parcel of those who who, who, who abducted, forcibly abducted the, the citizens from uh, from Kenya. All right. They, 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 I, I'd like to ask yeah. you this. We're really out of time, just in a few seconds. Do you think that this is politically motivated? This is another dimension of the conversation. I mean, uh, way back, some people think that there's a history to this. A few months before the elections, you have, uh, you know, some resurfacing of Namdi Kanu. It's almost the same thing that happened in 2019. Now it's happening. And some people think that yeah. this judgment or the ruling of the Court of Appeal has, you know, there's a hand of politician. Uh, it probably might just be, you know, the hand ahead of the 2023 elections. I'd like you to share your thoughts on that in a few seconds. Well, it's not something I can do in a few seconds because we all, <laughs> we all know the fact of um, the extent of political interference into the judicial affairs going by the fact that the Constitution allows the executive to make a point to, to promote and and to you know, give them room to meddle in the judicial affairs. For a long time, we've been making case for the for the for the exclusion of the judiciary from the reign of affairs, from the running of affairs. You know that the judicial system can always regulate itself and you know be self-exclusive. But I don't see any hand of the judiciary or you know, the politicians here. The, what happened is a case of clear court violation of fundamental rights. All right, all right, also, Ch Ch Chief. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Chief, when, I'm, I'm, when, sorry, I'm sorry to inter interrupt you. All right, all right. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt you, please. Uh, for the want of time, we'll have to um, uh, pull the plugs at this, at this point. But we'll definitely have you back uh, uh, sooner than later to discuss this, this is all important matter. Because um, we, we need, we, we, I think 20 <laughs> minutes is not even enough. Um, some lawyers are saying that the man uh, has to answer for the original matter that took him to court. No, but for, if you... If, for, for, if, sorry, if, Messi, for, for which he jumped bail. Now, what the court is saying is that, oh, okay, you approached us to appeal how you were brought into the country. How you were brought into the country was wrong. That's fine. But there is a matter that was there. He was granted bail. He jumped bail. So has that matter been determined? The answer is no. And what Malami is saying is that that matter still needs to be determined. The court still needs to decide whether no, so, he can so be So, coffee, coffee is very simple. I mean, let's you know? move on. I think so, it's so, very simple. So, so it, Nigerians need to be, be clear on this, that Namdi Kano has not been cleared of the charges no, uh, but that's not the him. reason why. It's like right. saying, give me money to do X, Y, Z. And you're saying, I have money for this. And there's a command. Go ahead. Money has been released or a certain injunction has been given. You need to obey that first. Respect, you know, the order that has been given. And then whatever consent that you have, you can always, you know, follow yeah. up with for me, it. For me, it's not an opinion. So, it's so just, I, I, don't think, I, don't think that, I don't think that there should be continuation. And that's what he's talked about. That yes, if yes. a court for, has for ruled, me, it's, it's not a we should go of, forward. Yeah, it's not a matter that's, what, that's what we're saying. If the, if, if, so it, it has nothing to do with what he stated. It. The, the injunctions are quite clear. Whether or not the government has an issue. Uh, a statement has been put out. It's expected that you respect it, and let's move on. And that's what it is. For, for me, but for we me, need to it, move it, on, it, Kofi. It, we it, can't it's continue. Not, um, for, it's not my personal. I'm just trying to paint the picture for people to see where Malami is But, but, but he, he stated uh, it rightly, and that, it. you know, the yeah. courts did not we don't, speak no, we're, in... We're, we're here to paint, the, the, to, to the, tell the people court, The court has not spoken in different language. I mean, like he stated, no, no, no. it's re-emphasizing that the statements are clear. That is not what I'm saying, that... A listener should also get what, where Malami is coming from so they can have a balance view. That's, that's all. Um, uh, as to whether Malami is right or wrong, that's not ma what I'm, I'm talking about. You know. But we, we'll continue. It's a very heated, heated subject matter. I'm sure we'll have some more time to talk about this. We'll take a break and when we come back, we'll look at a second major discussion this morning. Please stay with us.